let's get to it. All right. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining me today to get a high-level overview about BIMRX MEP and BIMRX Core. Uh, a quick reminder before we start, there is a questions section that you can type questions into as we go. Uh, I do have some teammates here who will respond if they can. Uh, otherwise, we'll answer those questions at the end of the session or reach out to schedule a separate deeper dive. Uh, my name is Ed Larivier. Uh, I'm a strategic implementation manager and product owner here at Microfix. Now, before we get started with the demo, I do want to take a little bit to talk about what BIMRX is. So Microdisk built BIMRX to enhance and simplify Revit and BIM 360. Each of the modules is purpose-built to allow you to get projects out the door faster, and spend less time on low-level tasks, and more time focused on design. BIMRX Core, MEP, and Fabrication are built to be part of Revit, while Cloud Manager is a standalone application. BIMRX is built to streamline the entire BIM project lifecycle from views and model production to collaborating with stakeholders and project administration. Today, we're here to talk about BIMRX Core and MEP. Core is the foundation for all BIMRX products and is focused on project setup, model management, and documentation. BIMRX MEP is a suite of commands to help you model and manage your models quicker and easier. Now, BIMRX automates those manual repetitive tasks so your team can spend time on the things that matter most. And with that, I'm just going to switch right over to the live demo. All right, so uh, we're looking at a nice architectural model right now, right? So to lay the scene here, uh, my architect has sent me two new towers that I need to start working on on top of the base four floors I've already been working with. I already have some views and cheats set up for, you know, those first floors and maybe not even cheats yet. But I've been doing a little bit of modeling for the first floor. Uh, I really need to get some stuff going for these towers. So I'm going to just jump straight into BIMREX core. And I'm going to start out by using my scope box manager. Now, what's really cool about the scope box manager is it allows us to start taking stuff that the architect has already done and not duplicating that work. So you'll notice I just chose the architect's model, grabbed both of their tower scope boxes, and made a copy of them within my model. As I go and look at each of those scope boxes, we'll see that they have actually been brought in. They do exist within my model. Now, it's extra cool is that if the architect maybe resizes their scope boxes, I'm mimicking that by changing the size of mine, or maybe one of our interns has moved that scope a little bit out of the way and messed up a bunch of views. We can very, very easily fix this because that scope box manager doesn't just copy those in, it does maintain that link and remember what item is matched to what. So we'll notice both of those towers showing as having been moved, not matching. I can grab them both, I can update them, and I can move them directly back to where they were before or to where the architect has moved them to. All right, I'm gonna close out of there. So we're not just bringing scope boxes in. You know, that's a real small portion of what's going on. Here. I'm also gonna use those scope boxes to help drive an entire set of views and sheets. So jumping into the sheet view manager, I'm able to use a configuration file, which I'm gonna load in right now. And that configuration file, something that I can reuse project to project, and it's getting me in here and it's going to give me a whole bunch. And why don't I just click apply here so you can see what it's going to give me. It's going to give me a whole bunch of views that it's about to create. We'll see I chose specific levels, those tower levels I want to work with. And it's using that configuration file to set up these view names and uh, layouts, right? We'll see it's giving us prefixes, view names, all the way across to even choosing the view templates that we're going to be placing, as well as using a scope box to create them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click create right here. Now, I just created 24 views in roughly three seconds. I'd like you to think about the manual portion here that it would take, oh, six seconds, my mistake. So in about six seconds, I've made 24 views. I'd like you to think about that right click, create new view process that we'd have to go through, or even going up to the view tab and going to plan views and creating each of those. So not only am I gonna create those views, that's, that's much too simple. I'm also gonna create sheets for all of those views to exist on. So we'll see, I went straight over from views to sheets, and I'm now gonna generate some sheet numbers, plans, even choose the title block I'm gonna be creating these with. So clicking create down here, it's gonna go through and create 24 sheets for me. As we look across the bottom, that took about 3.91 seconds. Again, an incredibly long process if you had to do this manually. 
Now, it's not just going to create those for me, right? There's a little bit more I want to do. I have two separate towers. I probably need two separate views. I can continue to use the power of Excel, jump in, and I can create my own duplicated views in here as well. So opening up that template, clicking load, jumping back to views, oh, jumping back to views, not sheets. Uh, we will see that I'm generating Tower A and Tower B plans for each of these levels. It's not using a template because it's inheriting it from the overall. And how do I know it's inheriting? Because we are duplicating as dependent, right? This is duplicating as dependent each of those views we just created. Again, an incredibly time consuming process, making 48 more views. Again, probably going to be three to oh, six seconds. Ooh, -wee. nice and quick, right? So I've created duplicated views, I've created sheets. Not only do I want to just create these things, I probably want to manage them as well. And what do I mean when I say manage? I probably want to place them on my sheets. So again, leveraging Excel, I can load that straight in here. I can grab all of those views. We'll see them all lining up, A and B, and it's even going to place them consistently from sheet to sheet. I'm going to click Create right here. And if we take a look in the bottom left, taking a look at these sheets, we will see as we you know, move out of mechanical, we'll see those pluses showing as each individual one of these views is placed on those sheets in its individual placement location. Uh, again, I'd like you to think of the manual process here that we'd be going through. We would be opening each of these sheets up. We would be dragging and dropping each of those individual duplicated views onto these sheets. And then we would manually be attempting to align these things up. This leads to very messy sets when we're working with those sets and uh, you know, real inconsistency from trade to trade. Uh, we're able to generate a set of views, a set of sheets that are going to be incredibly consistent. In fact, they're going to be duplicates of each other uh, for every trade, and our entire set is going to really be cohesive and look like one company created it. Right now, in the amount of time it took me to just sort of talk about what's going on here, I have spent you know a little under a minute and placed 48 views across all of those sheets. I'm going to close out a sheet view manager and just give you a little look at what that looks like. So jumping into that electrical level 12 plan, there we go. I have both of those sheets, top right and top middle, just sitting over there on the right. Really good stuff. So we're not just here to set projects up, right? We're here to go ahead and model, fill these things out in detail. So once project setup has been done, we can move into actually, you know, making some changes to our model and actually working on this. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to a coordination view here. Get out of those other views. I don't really need them anymore. Uh, and I'm just going to work in a coordination view while I continue you know, to make some changes to the model. So I'd really like to show off the MEP features now. right? If we look across MEP, we'll see a whole bunch of modeling features just all across here. We're going to take a look at how each one of these affects you know, a couple different trades. here. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with some conduit and pipework workflows. And really, a big thing I love about BIMRX is that it allows me to exist in a 3D view. In fact, what you're seeing right now, a 2D view paired with a 3D view is how I do all of my work. It gives me the context of what's going around beside me, but still lets me view what's happening in 2D so I can make sure these items look nice. So the first item I'd like to take a look at, pretty nifty command, is Route 2. Now, Route 2 is going to allow me to just choose any two connectors, or rather any two pipes, conduits, or ducts, doesn't matter what. Choose an angle. I'm going to go ahead and say 30 degrees. Click OK, and it's going to connect those items together for me. If we click on one of those elbows here, we'll see that that elbow is calling out that it is, in fact, exactly 30 degrees. No extra sections, no extra views, no rotating. It just works. And we'll notice if I use this command again, it's going to maintain that angle for me. So it's very easy to start routing these through. In fact, we can go ahead, and if we hover over some of these commands, we'll see that route uh, rather not route over under, uh, we can go ahead and key up some keyboard shortcuts. So if I wanted route two to have a keyboard shortcut, I could key that. We'll notice I use route over under so often, I have keyed that to RR. Right? So very quick to make some of these items here, you know, connect together. But you know, sometimes we're not just connecting together. Sometimes we're also doing some stuff in 2D, right? So maybe I want to go ahead and drop some elbows down here so I can show that these conduit are turning down. And then maybe I want to move them over to the wall. You know, I'd have to open up a couple section views to do this stuff. Well, I can use the elbow commands you see up here, which also key to my keyboard shortcuts to very quickly just drop these elements down. 
So I've dropped all of these, elbow down on all of them. I can use my move commands to grab that whole little rack of items I have sitting over here, and I can move these up against the wall. Wait. So you're in a much more realistic location, already looking pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and open this area up in 3D. Again, just grabbing these things in 2D, updating with my view selection box to just constantly make that 3D view look more correct for what I'm working with. Now, I've dropped all those elements down, and uh, they probably need to connect to something. So I'm gonna take a look, and hey, what do you know? I've got a little rack of pipes sitting down here below. But if I line this up on the left-hand view, we'll notice that rack down below, or that you know underground conduit here, or underground pipe, right? This works for everything. It's a little bit offset from up here. So I'm really gonna have to do a rolling 90 to get up to these elements, right? I'm gonna need to do a little 90 bend and then some sort of a connection, an incredibly common shape that we work with. So we actually have commands to help us do this. I have a kick 90 command that's going to allow me to select an element I want the 90 on and an element I want it to bend to. I'm gonna go ahead and use about 15 degrees here for that bend. As I click OK, we'll see that runs over and connects those perfectly. We get that 90 degree up, straight up to a perfect 15 degree bend leading into the top there. And there we see that 15s. In fact, we can continue to use that kick 90 for each of these elements, maintaining that, oh, just make sure you click the correct element, people, and we'll be good. Uh, that kick 90 again. And it will be maintaining that angle for us. So we can very quickly run all of these items together and keep them consistent, right? Let's do that one more time just so it shows up. Very, very easy to bring these elements together, right? So I mentioned that these work on more than just, you know, conduit. Let's go ahead and see some of this work on ductwork. Maybe I wanna come through this wall and turn all of these elements up. I can use my elbow up command and just select each one of these elements and it's gonna give me that elbow up popping up. You'll also notice it does that elbow up directly where that item ends. So you can pull these items out in 2D to exactly where you want them to turn up and then use the elbow up command to turn them up exactly there. Popping that open into 3D to take a look. Very nice looking stuff. So we're able to route in 3D, we're able to work in 3D, we can connect items together in 3D. But what if stuff's already sitting here and we need to make it a little bit more correct? Well, let's go take a look at an area of ductwork down here that has already been laid out, but maybe needs a little bit of help. Someone's thrown this in, they've made some copies, they threw some of the stuff down here that I need, uh, but for whatever reason, it didn't get fully connected. Now, typically I wouldn't wanna do this in 3D, I'm probably cutting section views, moving everything around, it's a lot of effort. I don't wanna to have to leave my 3D view though. So what am I gonna go ahead and do instead? I'm gonna use the suite of move, connect, and align commands to start bringing these items together. So I'm gonna start by using this align branch command. What's gonna allow me to choose a branch, choose an element to move that item up to. And we'll see that it's moved it up so they're perfectly lined up. And I can go ahead and use the keyboard shortcut here for that to bring the other items up as well. So I can very quickly bring those items up. I can use the built-in trim extend command in Revit to choose that main and then go ahead and connect all these elements to it. Very, very quick to make that happen. Now, I've got that one little air terminal sitting here. Well, I probably need two more. I'm just gonna make a copy in 3D. I'm willing to do that, not something I'm willing, usually willing to do, because I know I'm going to be able to use the move connect commands to bring these all together. So using that move connect, I'm able to just move and connect those. What do you know? It does what it says. So keyboard shorting that again, item to item, incredibly quick to bring these elements together. Now, I got lucky. All my boots are going the same direction, right? Very often, though, we'll find that those boots are going the wrong way, or maybe two of the three are going the wrong direction. Typically, if we want to fix that, we actually have to go to a two-dimensional view, and we have to use that flip button to toggle these things back and forth. If you have thousands of these, or maybe you have lights that have been placed in the incorrect direction, this is an incredibly time-consuming task. Well, let's go ahead and say that I just need all of these to flip the other direction. I can incredibly quickly fix that by just selecting those elements, and then using the flip multiple command that I have available up inside BIMRX MEP. So I've selected those elements, going to flip multiple, clicking that, and we'll see that toggles both of those right there. We can do this project wide. If we have laid out a bunch of items incorrectly, we could grab an entire project and flip every element in that project all at once. Very, very quick command. You'll also notice I grabbed the cap. It knows to ignore the cap. It is only working on the elements that can actually be flipped. So, I've got one little more piece of modeling I'd like to show the group here, uh, and that's a little bit of slope pipe. This is really the, uh, the bane of anyone working with piping. 
slope does not like to connect together. So jumping over here, a little area with some slope pipe kicking down, uh, just cutting the top of that out so we only see what matters, right? Now, if we take a look, we'll see that this little piece of sanitary over here uh, probably needs to connect into this main. Uh, if we look, it's floating up a little bit high. It's probably not going to connect flat. So I'm going to need to do some stuff. Here. So very quickly, I can just grab that elbow. I can go ahead and make an extension on that elbow. I can use the bloom command to cause an extension to come out of it. Once that extension has come out of it, I can use a fancy command, align branch, to choose the main, choose the element over here. And you'll notice it brought it down to a height that'll allow them to connect. I can then use the trim to corner command to bring these together. Grab that elbow on the end of the run. Again, add a plus to the end of it to give myself a T. I'm gonna bloom this out again, and I'm gonna go ahead and do an elbow up at the end of that run. I have just routed that entire piece of sanitary and given myself a clean out that I can work with in plan B, right? Incredibly, incredibly quick. But not only is it allowing me to make those changes here, what if I wanna copy this over, right? It does a little bit more than just working with stuff that's already sloped. What if I didn't have a slope here to begin with? And I'm gonna to prove to you that I don't have a slope by making this a zero slope over 12. So I've got no slope on that element. Well, what's extra, extra cool about these align commands? So we have an align branch plus. Align branch plus is going to take the slope of our main and move the other element to match with it and also inherit that slope for that element. I can then use that trim extend command to bring this in and have a perfectly flat connection with no transitions anywhere. Incredibly quick to work with these elements, incredibly quick to connect them together, and it really allows us to work with those slope elements, no problem. One last item I'd like to show you with sanitary. I've got a few elements just sort of floating around here. What, what if I wanted to bloom this piece of uh, floor drain down to give myself a little connector, and then maybe bring that uh, P-trap over to connect to it? Well, I could use move connect align to not only make that connection, but to rotate it so it sits there as well. I could then use the rotate fitting commands that we have available, sitting right up top here, to bring this 90 degrees to line it up against my run. Again, there's that 90 degree rotation. I can bloom this element out, give myself an extension to work with, uh, and then again, we can use that align branch plus to make sure that these elements line up at the correct height to connect. It is a very, very quick process to work with these items in 3D, something we are typically not able to do. So that's a bit of the 3D modeling stuff that we've seen here. Uh, very, very powerful. And this applies across all trades, all disciplines. The last little bit of stuff that I'd like to show you is a little bit of electrical circuiting and just a touch of the documentation that we have available. So jumping down here to the bottom right, we see a few uh, fixtures over here. And if I change this to a medium view, just to make those fixtures easier to see, we'll see all of that sitting right here. Well, I'd like to see what sort of data is available to these items right now. So if I jump to core, we have this entire tag settings command. What's really cool about our tagging commands is that we can set multiple profiles with multiple tags at a time. And all we have to do is select those elements and it'll place each of those tags down for us. Very, very powerful tool makes tagging a breeze. We'll notice right here that each of these two pairs are circuited to some different circuits. If I very quickly want to make some change there between those circuits, I have some very quick add to and take away from commands. So if I want to maybe add this element to this circuit, all I need to do is select the element over here, use the circuit add command, choose another element, click finish, and we'll see that it's brought it over to that other panel, or rather other circuit. Very, very quick for this to happen. Now, there's another really cool thing we can do here. Beyond just modifying those circuits as they stand, what if we wanna make copies of these circuits? So, I can go ahead and open up, I'm gonna to go to this elevation view. To note, this command needs to run inside an elevation view. I, I can jump back to my coordination view. I'm gonna select this panel right here. It's very common that we have typical panels and typical layouts from floor to floor. Well, I can grab that panel, and as we look in the elevation view, you'll see there's the panel, here's the circuits, Level two, I have the same layout, but none of that items are showing. If I jump to MEP, I can use the copy circuits command to go from level to level and make a copy of that panel and all circuits one level up. Jumping to that two dash coordination view, we'll see those sitting right here. If I very quickly use that tag command that we were looking at previously, we'll see that it pulls up those same exact 
items with these same exact labels. There's those panels. And to prove that it is a wholly different panel, I can jump up here to the panel we just made a copy of, grab that panel name, and add a dash to, which we will see update for each of those tags. Incredibly, incredibly quick to lay out large data centers, large buildings, large areas like that. Now, we can also tag you know, more than just uh, one thing at a time. So jumping right back to that coordination view, maybe I want to be able to tag both fixtures and lights simultaneously. I can also load in an entire other profile and do some lighting tagging at the same time. So bringing in those lights, I can come over here, select those lights, and we'll see it drops all those tags down. I have this one already circuited up to a panel. If I want to very quickly add the rest of these to the panel, again, I can use that circuit add command and just choose all of these elements all at once, click finish, and have all of those elements circuit up to that same exact panel. Very, very quick to start working. No more menu diving. Now, as we talk about documentation, we've gone through, we've done a whole bunch of tagging. We've done a whole bunch of editing. Everything looks nice. There's maybe a couple last minute things that we need to do. I'd like to show you very quickly the imprint feature. Maybe I need to start linking in files that exist outside of Revit. Imprint is a very quick manager for bringing in outside files. So I can go to create new. I'm gonna grab this PDF right here. I'm gonna open it up. I'd like to bring all three pages in and it's gonna go ahead and bring that in. It's gonna imprint it into my view. So very quickly, I've brought all of those in. And if I wanna remove, manage, or update them, I can do that as well. What's really nice about imprint, let me come back and take a look at it, uh, is that we can set these items to auto update every time that you open the imprint command or any time that Revit is open. So this is a nice link. You can almost think of it as linking to those outside documents. So very, very powerful command, really makes it easy to start working with other documents. So at this point, I'd like to think that we've really made it through documentation. Uh, and we're probably ready to go ahead and do some revisions and printing. So I'd just like to show the revision manager real quick. Revision manager makes it incredibly easy to just force revisions onto sheets. So if I want to grab a couple sheets, I can just very quickly add a revision and apply all of these items to sequence one. What's extra cool is that once I've maybe had some revisions in here, I can filter by them. I can select those elements and I can create print sets for those elements. So if I jump in here, I could call this red one and generate a print set for that element as well. And now that I've generated that print set, uh, I would like to jump back and speak a little bit about Cloud Manager. So jumping back to PowerPoint here. There is a little bit more. So one of the amazing additions to BIMRx is the integration of Core and Cloud Manager. We can now allow for the export of PDFs and NWC files from the Revit model on daily, weekly, and monthly basis. So how we just saw that print set being created with Revision Manager, Cloud Manager Pro can take that print set and automate the exports of PDFs either on demand or on a schedule. This integration opens the possibilities for even more ways to automate your workflows like never before. And a reminder, this workflow is part of the series, or webinar is part of the series. Uh, you can absolutely catch the Cloud Manager webinar live or on our website shortly. Now, just real quick, let's take a look at these time savings. Uh, really, the more elements you need to be modified, the more time you're going to save using BIMRx. Now, the real question is how much time are you wasting by not using BIMRx? Uh, and real quickly, we see about 90% savings in project setup, roughly 65 on modeling, and 94 on documentation. Uh, and this was all run with those metrics on the left. And BIMREX MEP includes even more incredible commands than just what we saw today uh, to automate project setup, model management, and documentation, allowing for tons of ways to speed up your workflows. I'm certain that you benefit from not just one, but many of the features listed here. And I hope you got a small taste of what Core can do for your project teams.